Hey, my name's Cody Warner. Let's dive right into the five shortcuts that you're gonna use for this style of editing called top and tail editing. Extremely fast, extremely efficient. Video sponsored by Squarespace. Basic premise is that you're gonna pull every single one of your clips into your timeline, and then you're gonna trim off the front of a clip and trim off the back of a clip. You're gonna go through the entire timeline and do that faster than real time. So uh, at maybe like 1.5x, or depending how good you get at it, if you shot it or if you didn't, that sort of thing, you might be able to go even faster than that. Now, the other component of this is that the shortcuts that you create on your keyboard in order to do this style of editing, need to be single key shortcuts. So for some reason in Final Cut Pro, most of these are multi-key shortcuts, so you're gonna need to change them to single key shortcuts. So at the very end of the video, I'll show you how to make those modifications to your keyboard shortcuts. So you can skip to the end if you wanna make my same modifications first so it makes the most sense, but I will also be telling you the default shortcut. All right, let's open up Final Cut Pro. Like I said, you're just gonna throw every single one of your clips into the timeline. So I clicked on my top clip, I'm gonna hit shift and click on my last clip and then just drag all of those down in the timeline. I could also hit E if I wanted to just throw them into the timeline at the end of the timeline. Very first keyboard shortcut or shortcuts is just navigating around this massive timeline that you have. This is 41 minutes long, right? So you need zoom in, zoom out, and zoom to fit on your timeline. So the defaults for those are command, and the plus sign to zoom in, command and the minus sign to zoom out, and then shift Z fits the timeline within your entire screen like this. And then command plus, command minus, those are the defaults. For me, what works the best is plus alone zooms in, minus alone zooms out, and then C zooms to fit. That's what I've changed it to. You do whatever works for you. I've also made Z zoom out, X zoom in and C zoom to fit because all of those keys are right next to each other. So I'm gonna hit C so I can just see the whole entire thing. Now go to the very front of the timeline. Secondly, and you don't have to modify these, J, K, and L. J plays backwards, K pauses, and L plays forwards. And the thing is, if you hit J multiple times, it will play backwards in the timeline at a faster speed. If you hit L multiple times, it will play forwards in the timeline at a faster speed. If I hit L, it starts playing at regular time. Hit L again, and it's gonna start going like 1.5X maybe. Hit L again, now we're at 2X, and then spacebar is gonna pause it, or you can hit K to pause it. You're gonna be using those two sets of shortcuts often, which is again why they each need to be single keys. So just hit J a bunch of times to go back to the very beginning of the timeline. I'm gonna hit plus so I can zoom in and see like this specific clip, play through the whole clip. Shot was a little bit unsteady at the beginning, so now we're on to the top and tail edits. This is the crux of where the speed comes in. In Final Cut, this action is called trim start and trim end. Trim start is the top, like trimming the top of a clip. Trim end is the tail, or trimming the tail of a clip. The keys that made the most sense for me as a trackpad editor are forward bracket and backward bracket. Like, it just looks like, the forward bracket just looks like you're trimming the top off of a clip, and the backward bracket looks like you're trimming the tail off of it, so it just makes the most sense. It's up there next to plus and minus. Because of muscle memory, now my hand just goes there. That's what I've chosen. The default shortcuts for these are option forward bracket, option backward bracket, but again, you're gonna switch that to just be a single key. So forward bracket, backward bracket, that's what I'm using. And the way that it's gonna work is at the playhead, when I press the forward bracket, it's gonna delete everything on the selected clip or the main timeline that came before where the playhead was. And then I'm gonna hit space to see that much of the clip, and I'm gonna hit the backward bracket, now I've deleted everything in that selected clip after where the playhead was, which leaves you with just the short middle of that clip that you wanted to use with the top and tail trimmed. There's two more crucial shortcuts that I'm gonna show you that work into this workflow very well. The whole premise of this being make it simple, make it fast, just like Squarespace does with creating your website. Extremely professional templates, so you can have something that looks amazing without needing to know how to code. You can literally create a website on Squarespace in less than a day. Bunch of integrations, so you can schedule appointments right on Squarespace, you can sell stuff in a shop right on Squarespace, host your portfolio there, obviously, 
whatever you need to do with a website on the internet. You can do it with a Squarespace site. You can do it quickly and efficiently, save yourself time and money. If you wanna check it out, go to squarespace.com slash Cody Warner, and then when you're ready to buy, use the code Cody Warner to get 10% off your first purchase. Okay, these last two shortcuts. What do you do if you're top and tail editing and you have a very long clip that you want to use multiple segments of first go and, and trim the top of the clip so bracket takes the top off we're going into the water nice a little jump in so trim the top right there run and jump in that's where i want it to end now i just want to blade right at where the playhead is the default shortcut for blade is command b but i change it to just b so if i hit b it blades the clip right where the playhead is and now i've in essence created a new clip that I need to trim the top off of. So just move forward, Bill's running in, trim the top right there, Bill dives through the wave. I'm gonna hit B, because I know that I need a new clip, I'm gonna want more of this clip later on. Obviously this is a longer clip, so I'm just gonna go through with the trackpad here, trim the top off of that clip, keep it going, hit B. And so that sort of sequence, like trimming the top, hitting B, Trimming the top, hitting B, that's how you're making one very long clip into multiple little clips without needing to like pull that long clip down into the timeline numerous times like you see people do, which is absolutely crazy. Lastly, and this has nothing to do with top and tail editing, but it is very crucial for this workflow. If you play this through right now, it's gonna sound choppy because the audio is just like hard cuts, all right? Now, you may know there's a way to add crossfades in between each one of your clips, and I have a different video on that if you wanna watch it. In order to make this audio sound seamless, what we wanna do is we wanna expand the audio components, and then once you've expanded an audio component, you can slide it around and add your own fades in there. So the hotkey that I created for that is H. If I select these clips and hit H, it expands their audio components and then I can turn this clip here into a J cut uh, the reason it's called a J is because like this kind of looks like a J do a little fade in there I used to detach audio in order to create these but not detaching the audio just keeps everything a lot cleaner and makes it a lot more editable if you start moving stuff around you're not going to lose your audio the default is control option s which is insane because expand audio is something that i use in literally every single video that i make okay so let's take a look at how to modify your keys to make them whatever you want to make them again i'm just going to show you how to make them what i've made them you can make them whatever you want the key is just if you use it often i'd say if you use it even just five times in an edit, it should have its own single hotkey. The only other thing I'll say about this is you wanna make sure that whatever you're choosing kind of makes sense comfortably with your hand. So for me, when I hit L for instance, uh, and I'm here, it just makes sense with my hand to hit spacebar which is why I use spacebar to pause and play. You just wanna make it so that your hand starts naturally doing what you want it to do, so it kind of becomes second nature. Plus and minus to zoom in and out on the timeline. Um, top and tail edits are right here. B is right here next to the spacebar. All that is to say, make this make the most sense for you. In order to do this, click on the Final Cut Pro thing, go to commands, and then click customize. That's gonna bring up this command editor. Go up here to where it says default, click that, and hit duplicate at the very top speed editing hit okay so now it just duplicated the default set of commands come up here into the search bar and then here's the list of the commands that you're going to change so if you type zoom you see here zoom in comes up it's the first one in the list then i'm going to go up here and click on the equals key and just slide zoom in right over here to no modifier Tap on the equals key, make sure that that's there. So now command and plus is gonna get you there and no modifier, just hitting the plus key is gonna zoom in. Let's do the same thing with zoom out. Click on the minus key, slide zoom out over here to no modifier. Zoom to fit is default as shift Z, but I want it to be C. So I'm gonna slide zoom to fit here to no modifier. Up here in the search bar, trim start. For me, that makes the most sense here at the left bracket. So I'm gonna slide trim start over here to left bracket. Trim end. 
I'm gonna slide that over to the right bracket. Blade, uh, when I click on B here, you can see that Command B is Blade. So this was the first one that I ever modified. So just like put Blade Tool down here in Control, just so you can save it. Slide Blade up to No Modifier, and then I put Blade All as Command B. The key is make Blade a single key. That's really, that's the only thing you need to do here, but this is just how I've done it. And then expand audio, like I said, I made that H because I don't need the hand tool to be a single key shortcut since I don't use it all the time. So I tapped on H, go up here to the to the search and hit expand, expand collapse audio components. So slide that over to H no modifier. There it is. Once you're there, be sure to hit save and then you can hit close. Then you're just going to want to make sure that when you come up here to Final Cut Pro and you go to commands that your speed editing command set is selected. And then you're good to go. All right? Then you're good to go. That is how I edit fast. You will find as you get into this editing game, the faster you can get your rough cut done, the faster you can get version one done, the faster you can get your revisions done, the more sanity and peace and serenity you feel in your life. Thank you so much for being here. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get this thing.